Hello. Wow, 2020 was quite a year. <laughs> In today's video, I'm going to show you what my innocent unknowing self wrote as goals for 2020 before calamity hit. We'll talk about how 2020 actually treated me and my art career. I'll talk about how I did on those goals, and then I'll wrap it up with what I'm hoping to achieve in 2021. Mostly not get mangled by my angry cat. <laughs> And just to keep things interesting, I'm gonna share footage of me painting a calico cat. And first I wanna show you guys what my goals were in 2020. Oh, kitty, really? I'm trying to make a video here. Okay, so let's take a look at my goals that I had for 2020. And here was were my goals for 2020, and I really thought they were a stretch <laughs> because I really didn't think I would ever get this far, but I wanted to kind of challenge myself, so. My goal for 2020 was to have 5,000 YouTube subscribers. Last night, I got to 5,000 subscribers. Because I thought 5,000 at the time was crazy. Because at the time I wrote this goal, I think I only had 500 subscribers. So that has been an amazing journey in and of itself. And I wanted to make $500 a month regularly on Patreon. I'm up to $1,000 a month on Patreon a month. It's, it's such a dream come true to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel where I can really make a real living from my art at home, being there for my son and taking care of my family and doing it all on my own terms. Okay, my next goal was help another artist go full time. The universe didn't bring me someone to help like that. I was waiting for that person and they never showed up. And this year they did show up, I think. I'm not saying I can help her go full time. I can't even say I've helped myself go full time at this point. But um, this artist that I discovered, Bedorka, she is amazing. So check her out. Up commission prices again. I definitely did that because as I'm making more money on Patreon, I can do less commissions and uh, dedicate more time to my videos. And what has happened is I up my commission prices, but uh, the amount of commissions I have has not really gone down. <laughs> so that's been a nice surprise. And I didn't up my prices that much. Like an 8 by 10 simple uh, painting now is $300. I also wanted to expand my website, which I've done. I've added a Patreon index to my website. So here's my website, and this is my Patreon index. Here you can see all the tutorials I have available on Patreon. The other thing, <laughs> Shed, I have this um, ratchet shed in my yard and it is so ratchet. <laughs> Let me show you. Yeah, this is my ratchet shed <laughs> and we were all set. We had someone picked out to uh, tear it down and uh, build something new, beautiful, wonderful. I was so excited. And then the pandemic hit and we just felt like we needed to be financially conservative, so we decided to put it off. Let's talk now about what I hope to accomplish in 2021. I hope to continue to grow my YouTube channel. Right now I just turned 5,000, so I think it's probably realistic. It seems like a crazy number now, but I remember thinking 5,000 was a crazy number, so 10,000 maybe isn't so crazy. Another goal I have is to grow my Patreon, hopefully to around 2,000 a month on Patreon. And if I get to that point, I just, I think that I'm definitely will feel established enough that I can call this something uh, that's sustainable that I can do as a full-time job. Another thing that I really want to work on is to provide more simple, fast, easy tutorials because I think people are so overwhelmed, especially with the pandemic and everything that's happening. And those tutorials that are easier, I always feel like it, they get even more traction than my more difficult ones. So I'm hoping to come up with more easy tutorials, which for me is hard. I usually do more complex paintings and it just doesn't come naturally to me to just do something simple. If you have any ideas on how I can create some simple tutorials, if you have some simple painting ideas, do tell. Look at my squirrel, look, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> I feed my squirrels, yeah, I shouldn't do that. Another thing I'm gonna keep on the list, hopeful, wishful thinking maybe, but I would love to get that shed fixed. I'm also toying with the idea of maybe maybe doing a Skillshare class. So if you have any experience with Skillshare, either as a student or as a teacher, I would really love to hear from you in the comments and I would love to know what your experience is. All right, let's do some bonus stuff. 
what worked for me in 2020 and what I think I should keep doing because it worked for me before. And this section is especially for those of you who are YouTube online artists or who sell their work online. This will hopefully help you grow your art career and learn from me about what works. So one of the biggest things for me as far as generating income that worked was something I didn't have to do at all. It was Etsy's change in how they advertise and they've changed their advertising approach and it worked because I had the best year I've ever had on Etsy uh, so far. So I am gonna stay on Etsy. I wanna continue to expand the offerings I have on Etsy. And that leads me to my second tip that I wanna offer to you guys as far as what worked for me, and that is offering large prints. Now, you wouldn't think that large prints would sell because I think a lot of us artists experience this. We find that a little eight by 10 for 200 bucks is impossible to move, no one buys it. But it's not because people don't want it, it's just it doesn't fit what people need. And so naturally, you probably think, okay, if I can't sell an eight by 10 original for 200, there's no way someone's gonna pay $800 for a large print. You would be wrong. That is one of the things that brings me pretty decent income. It's a nice addition to my income. It's not everything, but it definitely is a worthwhile thing to have in my Etsy shop. So on every single print I offer in my Etsy shop, I offer a lot of different sizes. And one of the most popular things is really large prints like 16 by 20 and up. So for 16 by 20, I charge $100 and then they go on up from there and they sell more frequently than you would think. I probably sell at least one or two or three larger size prints a month. And that's a good little bit of extra income. So don't be afraid of at least offering options to people, you might be surprised what they buy. So that worked very well for me in 2020. Another thing that has worked for me is whenever I do simpler tutorials, people really seem to appreciate those. And there's so many simple tutorials out there on YouTube, but I, I don't think that market can get enough of them. So the more simple and easy and fast tutorials you can do for people, if you're a YouTube artist, I think that is gonna help your YouTube channel grow. And I've noticed that the YouTube channels that have grown the fastest are often because of their simpler tutorial. So I will try to do more of those. My Christmas tutorial, how to paint six different Christmas trees was a really big hit and that was a really simple tutorial. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me on my 2020 recap. I would love to hear what you are hoping to achieve in 2021. And please don't be shy about asking me questions about how I've built my YouTube channel or my art career or anything else about how I paint. And I love to answer those kind of questions in the comments. So please subscribe, like this video, show me some YouTube algorithm love, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Do you want to say bye? Sorry, don't hurt me. Trying to bite me. Are you gonna bite my face? <laughs> I think she's wanting to. <laughs> oh gosh, I just totally got off track.